Hi guys and welcome to Rufus and Doofus. Chico and Rufus here today in the RV. Uh, today is um, project day so I think what I'm going to do is begin to install the jack antenna that I ordered. In order to do that I have to remove the old antenna first and uh, just want to show you what I've started to do here in the rig. And also want to say hello to Rufus. Hi Rupus, how you doing buddy? Say hello to everybody. So as you can see Rupus is very comfortable and adapting very well to RV life as am I. Right buddy? Oh yeah, you're my best friend. Yeah, boy if you could learn how to cook and grab beer out of the refrigerator, wow, we'd really have something there, wouldn't we? <laughs> Okie dokie. So let me show you where I'm at. I've just removed the crank handle here from uh, the ceiling and as you can see this one here was broken okay and that was mounted up there real easy one set screw and then uh, that takes the handle and the spring off and then the only thing you have to do is pull out four screws which takes the little face plate off now that antenna when we get to the screws outside after taking off the uh, sealant that's there we should be able to pull that right off and shouldn't be a problem um, that's probably going to be the most uncomfortable part of the job working outside in the heat and then I have to deal with putting the um, the uh, power supply here where the old power supply and booster is now or I may leave that one there because it does have a 12 volt outlet on it so let's get moving things don't get done just talking about them for this particular application, um, I ordered the optional base plate, which makes sealing the existing holes a little bit easier. So let me show you what that's like. This is it right here, okay? And this raised part is the part that's going to actually uh, show when we lay it down on the roof. So raised part up. Now, the antenna here is going to fit right on top of that if you can see that it's going to fit right on top of that and what we have to do is apply a sealant right along here all the way around and then there's some supplied nuts and bolts that come with it and we are going to tighten those down so that we have a nice tight seal between that optional base plate and the antenna. There's also a portion here where you can see and what happens there is the existing antenna wire normally which comes up from a different hole than what the uh, bat wing has now is going to be laid in here sandwiched between the base plate and this and then die cord so that there's no possibility of water entering here. So the, the coax cable coming from inside will come right through here. That's the one that goes with the, with the power and goes to the TV. This wire here goes to the control mechanism, which is this, and it's in two parts right now. Hope you can see that, but it'll look different. It'll all come together and you'll see this is the part with the LEDs on it and such. And uh, that's the part that shows. This is the part that will mount up against the ceiling upside down like this. And here's that little gain switch that we were talking about. And here are the actual LEDs and an on and off switch on the side there. So not too complicated, but it's still going to take a little bit of effort. Um, it's, you know, it's not a, a, an easy project, but it's not a difficult project. But it's a project, I think, that requires three or four hands, and it's going to be a little difficult for one person to do alone. Uh, only to hold these things together while you're doing it, you know, just, it'll be fine. It'll be fine, trust me. This part goes through the roof. There is an extension in case you have a thicker roof than normal that comes with it at no extra charge. So I hope you understood um, the explanation I gave. And I think when you see me doing it, it'll all come together. See you in a little bit. Well, I'm up here on a ladder, up on the roof, just trying to orient what I'm going to do here. Now, this 
base plate is going to face up like this with the uh, elevated part up and it's going to face towards the front and it has to be a minimum of eight inches from the edge which we've got all right and what that's going to do is it's going to mount right here where my antenna is at present this is the cable that's coming up through the roof right there and that's a cable that's got to mount into the new antenna and as you can see this one's kind of old decrepit looking I don't like it I don't like being up here on the rig roof either or on the ladder I should say I'd probably be better off on the roof and that's probably where I'll be later but I just wanted to show you the orientation of this what I'm gonna do once I get this antenna off here is I'm gonna take this base plate, the square one, get it where I want it, line up the existing hole with this hole. It says that I have to have a two and a quarter inch hole to make this work correctly. But I did a little uh, playing around inside with the uh, mechanism, the one that um, they send you in case you need it for a thicker roof. And it looks like it's gonna fit there with plenty of room in the existing hole, which is only about two inches maybe a little less but looks like there's plenty of room and uh, once I trace this out and have the antenna connected to the coax and sealed to the base plate then I should be able to use some butel tape around the perimeter make the seal and then screw right through this base plate into the roof and it's going to seal all the holes just a little bit of Dicor, and I'm not going to plaster it so that it looks like crap. And we should have a very nice watertight seal. All right, here I am drooling, I don't know why. But that's it, so I just wanted to show you what I'm up to here. Uh, now I'm going to go back in. Uh, I'm going to attempt to remove this putty that's around the, uh, or the Dicor that's around the existing antenna, and get to the mounting screws, and at least get this antenna off the roof. That's our next step doesn't look like it's going to be too much of a bear. I'm using my fingernail here and it's lifting off quite nicely. So I think once I get the putty knife up here, uh, this should all come up with no problem at all. As you can see, it's coming off just with my finger. Uh, and that's not to say that it's rotted or anything. It's just soft enough that I can do that. So it's not going to be that bad of a job, I think. All right. Don't go away. We'll be back. All righty. Okay guys, uh, I'm going to go up there and try and scrape off that uh, die core, at least attempt to do it a little bit. I'm going to do a little at a time, it's about 89 degrees here, it's very hot, so I'm going to take my time. And I also want to show you the tool I'm going to be using, it's a 6-in-1 uh, Red Devil, uh, I guess I'd call it a putty knife. I got it at Amazon.com and uh, I will be posting a link on everything that I use to do this install. Uh, including the jack antenna link, but also the butyl tape, uh, the uh, scraper, the die core, everything I use, the base plate, you name it, okay? So hopefully if you guys are going to do it, you'll be able to order from one place and not have to hunt and peck, okay? Talk to you in a little bit. I'm going up. Alright, being that I'm up on a ladder and I don't want to fall off, I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do this, which is with this little tool that I bought. And I think it's going to work very nicely because it's sharp and it also um, uh, gets right in there. So let me do that so I don't fall off this ladder and I'll show it to you when I'm done, okay? But you got the idea. Okay, as you can see, this job is going quite smoothly. And I got to tell you, this, this putty knife is nice because uh, it gets right into where you want it to get into. And it's sharp and it's very stiff so um, it makes a big difference as far as getting this crap off of here and I just wanted to show you I'm about halfway through maybe a little less of getting the old stuff off I removed the antenna it was with just a matter of pulling the two pins out of here and getting the mast off it makes it a little easier alrighty we'll see you in a little bit well guys um, I got most of the uh, die core off and I'm doing it from the ladder position here because it's easier to go up and down than trying to get on the roof. Eventually I will have to get on the roof though. 
but let me show you what I've got. The only thing left to do, I think, is to undo the uh, screws that are holding it in, and then we can uh, pull this old unit out and prep the surface for the new unit. So, as you see, I did the best I could from the position I'm in on this ladder. Um, actually, pretty good, I thought. And this tool is really working out well. Um, this little point has come in extremely handy and the fact that it's rigid so um, if you can find one local great if not um, I'll have the link up on Amazon all right let me get going here okay as you can see here I just disconnected the antenna this little boot is almost shot I don't there isn't a new one but it's not needed because this is going to be covered by the new antenna so the only thing exposed will be the wire and this is the wire that's got to go uh, in between the antenna and that base plate so just so you know very easy to disconnect from the uh, old antenna uh, at least it looks that way for right now I see that it passes through here uh, hopefully that connection will fit through there all right so let me get going and get this old one off the roof okay guys um, I just undid the screws here uh, as you can see I used a screw gun with a little nut driver attachment they came out very nicely and I started to pry this up okay and I used my putty knife again to do that so looks like everything's coming up nicely all right that's done we have a clean shot through to the inside of the rig right there and we're, what I'm gonna do is get rid of the remaining um, putty here uh, looks like they put some butyl tape down and we'll get that up with our putty knife or any other means that's available and then I'm gonna clean that up with some mineral spirits and I'm gonna bring the new antenna up here and um, at least the base plate and trace it out and I'll show you what I'm talking about okay so so far so good see you in a little bit okay I've got the um, uh, mount the old mount off and I've cleaned up the the best I can the putty that was there and the butyl tape and you can see it's fairly clean but now I want to go over it with some mineral spirits and clean it up good so that I know that I'll have a really good weather tight seal when I put the new one in and uh, I still think this hole is going to be big enough but I'm going to double check and bring the antenna up here lay it in there and make sure that uh, it works the way it should okay so don't go away okay guys I've uh, just test fit uh, the antenna without the base plate attached okay but I wanted to see if it in fact that hole was big enough for this to rotate freely and as you can see I did not have to redrill that hole so I would suggest before you go redrilling it to do what I did uh, because to drill a hole even without a hole saw if there's nothing for the pilot drill to grab onto is a very tricky job and almost dangerous uh, when you're trying to do it without that drill pilot hole so I lucked out this is gonna work I'm now gonna clean this area and then I'm going to put together my base plate uh, get this all sealed up with the with the Dicor uh, ceiling here and the butyl tape and uh, then I'll have to get up on the roof and actually put the antenna in the hole so we're almost done on the outside not much left to do hopefully it'll go as smoothly as this did I think the key is not to rush all right see you in a little bit all right guys I gave that a good cleaning with uh, uh, mineral spirits on a rag as you can see it's nice and clean so I'll get some good adhesion and that's the mineral spirits that I used odorless not quite but hey better than what the stuff used to smell like of course I like that smell so go figure right but yeah we're ready to do our trace mark now and we're pretty close we're pretty close um, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to get up on the roof maybe not we'll see it would be nice if I didn't have to but uh, let's see what happens Okay guys, I'm ready to uh, mark the base plate. What I'm going to do is pre-drill it. Uh, I just feel more comfortable pre-drilling this because I think it'll crack if I don't. Um, but I'm going to put some um, uh, holes around the perimeter. And then 
after I put the butyl tape down and everything, I am going to use these screws right here, which are roofing screws, and they actually have a, a, a membrane, or not a membrane, but a little washer that's made out of the same material that the roof's made out of, and they're by Tex, okay? And you can get these uh, online at Amazon if you can't find them anyplace else, and I'll put a link down there for them, all right? So let me mark my base plate, pre-drill it, and then we'll go up and trace it up on the uh, roof, okay? Okay guys, uh, I used butyl tape to um, seal the two sections together, the base plate and the antenna. These are the screws that I used, they're stainless steel screws. Um, I really don't think there's any need to put any caulk on there and make them look any worse than they do. We'll keep an eye on them as we go, but I think that between the sandwiching of the butyl tape and tightening the, the screws and the fact that these are stainless steel, uh, we don't have anything to worry about there. So the only thing we have to do now is seal this portion to the roof, which I've pre-drilled. And what I'm gonna do is lay some butyl tape all the way around the perimeter. And uh, then we're gonna put in those roofing screws that I showed you. And then we're gonna put some caulk around the edges on this. Okay, I feel a little more comfortable putting some caulk there. So uh, we're almost done with the outside install. Okay, not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Time consuming though, you know, taking your time. Okay, I've got my butyl tape down, ready to go. That should make a nice seal. So uh, I think we're good to go here. And we're gonna lay it down as best we can, according to our marks. And then we're gonna screw it in and then, uh, at, later on, I'll uh, seal it up. Okay. Okay, we got all our roofing screws in there, as you can see. And the butyl tape is squeezing out, which means we got a really good seal all the way around. And I've been fortunate up to this point, I haven't had to get up on the roof. I'm doing it all from right here, and I'm happy. So I think I can even caulk this uh, all around the edges. And these screws... Um, the roofing screws shouldn't need to have caulk on them, especially since there's butyl tape under them. And they're also meant not to rust. So why make it look like crap? Let's try it and see what happens with the screws. Um, <clears throat> no um, Dicor on the screws because of the, the rubber gasket that's going to protect the hole. And these, uh, these screws will not rust. All right, we'll see you soon. Okay, um, got all the screws in. I got my extra wire looped up nice. Yes, I know I drilled three holes in the roof, but guess what? I'm going to die core them. They're going to be fine. It's better than having that wire flopping around everywhere. And there's my helper down there. That paddy wagon holding the ladder so uh, Chico don't fall and break his watermelon. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it looks How's great. it look up there, buddy? Beautiful. You did a pro job. Yeah, it looks all right. Looks great. Looks like Mr. King Jack did it himself, don't it? Yeah, it's awesome. Alrighty. It's a nice addition to your rig. Good profile, too. Yeah, it, it looks nice. You can hardly see it up yeah. there. No more cranking up, cranking down. No more forgetting. And more channels. Yeah, we got to do mine next. Alright. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm all done with this installation except for a little caulking outside. And uh, just have to put the cover on the the uh, little gizmo, the injector, whatever they want to call it, the antenna rotator, here inside the coach. But let me show you what we got. This is it right here. This mounts to the ceiling with a few screws. Okay, these are the LEDs for the signal strength. And this is your gain control. And this turns the antenna up top on the RV. And then there's a cover that just goes over that. So very simple to do, okay? The gain thing and LEDs, uh, you know, okay, it works, but it, you can fine tune it a little better if you got a channel that isn't coming in quite right. Um, it's very easy to just turn the antenna a little bit until you get it right where you want to. Uh, is it w worth it? Yes, the antenna is doing a great job. There's a TV behind me, beautiful picture as you can see. The important thing is. Did I gain anything by doing it? Well, I believe I did. 
for one thing, the antenna is very stealth looking, nice and close to the roof, no need to crank it up or down. So there's no forgetting leaving it up. Uh, and it doesn't bounce around on the roof and you know wear a hole in the roof, which they shouldn't do anyway. Uh, as far as channels go, well, let me, another plus. Does it look good? Looks great out there. Really does. It looks, uh, it almost gives the coach a newer look. Yeah, pretty sexy actually. So I'm happy with that. Uh, and the big thing, I got like maybe nine or ten more channels than I had when I started this project. So yeah, it's worth it. I like it. It definitely brings in signals very nicely. I'm very happy. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. So, here's the deal. I'm going to put all the links of everything that I use to do this installation under the video. So you'll know what to go out and buy. Alright? Um, the links will be for Amazon, but maybe some of the stuff is available locally. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe, because Rufus and I would appreciate that. Wouldn't we, buddy? We sure would.